That's not what I meant. That's what I meant. If you want to do it now, you can. Okay. So today is our final opportunity to meet together before we meet together again for the final. Okay. So um, what I'd like to do today is uh, kind of field questions. You know, we might not have time to do like the most complicated problem in the world. All right, but I'm hoping that we can kind of maybe go through some topics um, and and. Um, and have a good time. All right, so, yes, questions? Uh, are you going to have any additional office hours besides Friday? Uh, Monday, right? Oh, yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if you were having Yeah, 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 I'll do Friday, Monday. Wait, when's the exam? The exam's a week from Tuesday, right? A week from today. Today, yeah. today. A week from today. Today is Tuesday, right? Yeah, today is Tuesday. All right, so, yeah, so I'll be, yeah, Friday and Monday. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if there would be additional time. Uh, Praj will be meeting Wednesday tomorrow, so that's Wednesday. He has office hours. So that's Wednesday, Friday. So we got Wednesday, Friday, Monday. We don't have Thursday, but that's, yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, it'll, I'll put it up. Uh, sure, fine. It's a little bit of a... I'll have it up it later. It's just for people to get it now if they want it. All right. Okay. Other other general questions. <sighs> other general. Yes. How was your day going? It's been it's been a little bit tough. I woke up around two a.m. I've been up for a long time. I uh, did get a nap, but yeah, it's it's been a long day. All right. Thank you for asking. How's your day going? Well, it's fine. It's kind of day. Okay. Thank you for asking. I normally do ask how everyone's doing. Um, so yeah, so what I'd like to do is kind of write down a list of topics that people are interested in in, uh, in talking about today. And then we'll go through, we'll, we'll see if, you know, uh, what they look like and, and maybe go into more detail on some of them. All right? So what do you want to talk about? Technical ones. What topics are of interest? Okay, you want to talk about in, well, so let's write some down, right? So you want to talk about indeterminate? Also bars. Okay, I so I'm just gonna write down what you're saying, and then I will evaluate as we get more topics down. All right. To see, yes, yes, yes. Okay. What else would you like to talk about? Beam deflection. Beam deflection. All right. Okay. What else? What other topics would you like to talk about? Also make the beam What 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 else? What other topics are of interest that we might talk that we might review today? Yes, Paul. Okay. So so setups. Beams as springs. Okay. All right. What else? What else would you like to talk about? Let's see. Hold on. There's a whole other class. <laughs> that, that might be it for you, right? But there's a whole other class. Yes, Isha. Failure criteria. Okay.
Okay. What else would you like to talk about? Yes. Jay. Um, well, let's just put it down, right? I just want to, I want to get an idea of what you all are thinking might be important. Okay. And also what might be confusing. All right. What else? What other topics? Are there other topics? So I was writing notes on all of them, actually, before coming in today. We have session one, physical units, scaling relationships. Session two, static equilibrium. Session three, axial loading. Session four, stress and strain. Session five, material properties. Uh, session six as well, material properties. Session seven, normal loading. Session eight, also normal loading. Session nine, torsion. Session 10, torsion. Session 11, beams. Session 12, beams. Session 13, beams. Session 14, beams. Session 15, thin walled pressure vessels. Session 16, combined loading. Session 17 is plane stress. Session 18, more plane stress. Session 19, more plane stress, more circle. Session 20, absolute max shear. Session 21, plane strain, more circle. Session 22, failure criteria. Session 23, failure criteria. Session 24, beam deflection. Session 25, beam deflection. Okay. So I, when I wrote them all down and I wrote all these pages, I realized there was no way I could cover every, every one of these topics. So that's why I'm asking. Yes, Jay. Uh, Combined loading, all right. Okay. Other topics? Other topics? You're almost raising a hand. You got an idea? Just say it, it's okay. Plain strain. Okay. All right. Were you going to say something, Federico? Did you have an idea? Uh, no. Okay. I'll pick up one. Double. All right. Any other ideas? Yes. Problem. Okay. Problem one, exam two. Okay, so that uh, is under, um, that would be under angle of twist, right? All right. And indeterminate as well, right? Yes. There were some that were indeterminate and some were not. Okay. Other ones? Other, other ideas? Yes. More circle. Uh, yeah, I, I would think that would be one to come up, but all right. And that's, that's also, there's the plain strain version, right? And there's the plain stress version, right? We can, we can maybe, okay. Other topics? Okay. Jay, yes? Yeah, the von Mises, yep. So that's under failure criteria. Okay, good. Other other topics we might talk about? No? Yes? All right. We're going to go then, all right? And I will make some decisions here. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Okay, yes, I couldn't see you, Michael. Hold on. The thin walled pressure vessel, what? The what? Fuselage. Okay, that's maybe a little specific, but okay. So thin walled. <coughs> oh, 
Okay. All right. Anything else? Yes. Now you have. Yeah. Doing exam. Problem three on exam one. I don't remember what that is, to be honest. But okay. We're not going to get up to all of these. All right. We're not. But I'm going to try to answer some of these things. And this is kind of, you know, ad hoc a little bit. OK, anything else? All right, let's do it. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about beams, all right? A few different things about beams. And uh, we'll start with determinant. And then we'll talk a little bit about determinant systems, OK? I think that's probably a logical, maybe somewhat logical order. And then we'll come back to this list, all right? So let's talk about beams. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll just, we'll just, where, where should we start? Uh, let's start with, Something that looks like that, OK? So when you have, this is a determinant system, OK? And when you have this type of system, what is the first step to pretty much anything that we do? If we want to do a, a shear force bending moment diagram, if we want to do, uh, you know, if, if, we want to, if we want to calculate deflection, what is the, the first step? Equilibrium on forces and moments. On yes, so it's external equilibrium, right? We're going to do equilibrium probably, potentially how we attack this problem a couple of different ways, right? But uh, or we might use equilibrium a couple of different times, right? But the first thing is going to be external equilibrium, right? So that's kind of like your step one. Okay. All right. Uh, then for step two, you kind of have a couple of options. You have multiple options, right? What's what are your options? Well, that's equilibrium, yes. But so you're saying we can do uh, what kind of equilibrium? We're going to be do that. Would be probably method of sections, right? That's one option. So you have method of sections, right? And then you do internal equilibrium. Okay. Uh, the other technique, we'll call this 2A, all right? And then 2B, what would the alternative be? Yes? Well, okay, method of joints if it's a truss, all right? But we're talking about beams. So usually we don't, we don't do that with beams, all right? Yes? What's that? Kevin? Moments? Well, using, using moments for external equilibrium, but or that might be just covering the problem. Yeah, I mean, that's external equilibrium, right? External equilibrium is not just forces. Right? If equilibrium is forces and moments, right? Okay? Just to make that clear. So what's the other the other technique that we have? Deflection. Well, deflection comes later. Let's say deflection is down here. Okay, that would be like the third thing we do. Yes, Jesse. Yeah, exactly, right? So we have the uh, we have differential uh, integral. Relationships. We'll just say relations. Oh, no, I can relationships. Okay, good. Right, so because we have dv, right, dx is equal to w, or w is equal to dv dx, right? And we have dm 
dx right, is equal to v. Right, so these are kind of your two, two, two options you have. All right, so, um, and then, yes, afterward we can start to look at deflection. Um, and with deflection, what do you have? There are kind of a couple of techniques there too, right? Yes, Michael? Yeah, so you have, uh, so kind of tables and superposition. All right. And what else do you have? Yes, Chris. Huh? And the integration of the tables. Yeah, uh, well, so you can go without the tables. You can go solo, right? You could just do method of integration. Right? And if I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm running off notes. I have notes, but I'm running off them. So if I'm forgetting things, just let me know. But right, we have the opportunity to use EID for the fourth derivative, remember? Right, is going to be equal to W. Right, but that's not the one I would, that would not be my first choice, right? My first choice would be to get, you know, moments M equals question mark, V equals question mark here, right? And then use this relationship, okay? The second derivative of the, uh, the displacement is equal to um, the moment internal moment, okay? All right, so what I'd like to do is kind of break this problem down and kind of demonstrate a few different things that we can do here, okay? Yes, it may be boring, but let's, it's probably not that boring uh, for some because I think there may still be questions. So if we're gonna do external equilibrium, And I guess I, I could say, you know, underneath, uh, anytime you do these types of problems, right, you can think about equilibrium and different steps. You can think about geometric compatibility. And you can think about constitutive relationships. And if that's just a really fancy way if you're like with a bunch of mechanicians, you're like, yeah, what are the constitutive relationships? I don't know. What are the constitutive? Yeah, like they'll talk about constitutive relationships. All right, what is this? This is really just relating material properties to deformation or to, so it's relating stress and strain essentially. Okay, so these are material properties. Props, okay, for uh, force to deformation. Okay, or stress to strain. Okay. All right. So those are kind of like, remember we talked about some, you don't have to do it this way, but some people like to do three columns on their piece of paper. They do the equilibrium column, they do the geometric column, geom geometric compatibility column, or geometry, and they do the constitutive relationship column. Okay. So here, when you, when you do external equilibrium, do you care about the conventions? Actually, no, okay? So when you do external equilibrium, I don't care about conventions. I'm going to pick whatever I think is gonna make my life the easiest. And my life is easiest when it's positive, okay? Not always. There's sometimes there's sad moments and difficult moments, all right? So on the left, on the left, what do you put? Okay, so which way do you want the moment to be? Counterclockwise or clockwise? Huh? How about the other way? <laughs> How about counter, okay? Is that okay? All right, and I'm gonna call it ML. All right, just that's what I do. Now, all right, I'll do this one for you. We don't have to go this, you know, we'll call this FL, all right? And uh, what am I gonna do about the distributed force? 
Yes. Yes, turn it into a point load, and that will have quantity. Yes, okay. And it's acting halfway. I didn't give a length, but all right. Like that, right? Okay, so now we do our equilibrium, because uh, we don't know what FL and ML are, right? But we can, we can figure them out pretty quickly. So we'll sum the forces, right? And we have FL minus W naught L is equal to zero. That means FL is equal to W naught zero, or W naught L. And the moments, right? What do I put here? Where are we summing the moments from the point? Well, Let's say we sum it at the left. You tell me what to write. That's why we're doing this. Well, not why we're not doing so you can tell me what to write, but we're doing it to review. Yes. Good. All right. So, huh? Oh, yeah, good. Sorry. Yeah, good, good. Right, okay. So the force, right, is omega naught L and it's acting at L over two away, right? And that's equal to zero, so there we go. Okay. All right, so um, we've got some options now for internal equilibrium. Okay. If we use method of sections, right, that's the one that you've known how to do since statics. And uh, I, you know, I often like to go from the left, right? So if we do that here. We've got our externals. Okay, and the conventions, this is where the conventions come in, right? Or should I, should I fast? When you do this, do you have to use the conventions? Absolutely, okay? When you're taking the internal cuts, or internal slices, right? So the conventions give us this and that, okay? Um, so if we do, now we do equilibrium again, right? So we have that... Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We should do that too. Okay. Good. All right. So uh, for the uh, for the V, right? We have what do we have? We have uh, FL. So we're summing forces, <laughs> right? We have FL. We have minus V, and what else do we have? W naught, w naught X, all right? Okay, so however far we've gone in X, that's the amount of force that's acting on it, right, when we take a slice. And, that, and, and, so, and then this is equal to zero. Uh, what is the unknown here? The unknown is V, right? So this is just going to be FL minus W naught so we've done that. Um, FL, we said, we, we wrote it up there. That's also W naught L, right? So what we have here is that, okay? Now, if we have uh, a moment, opportunity to do moments, right? We're doing that again, so we have, and we'll say that ML is positive. Let's say I actually, so I would pick doing it at the right side, right? Because then we don't have to worry about V. Okay, that's typically how we do it. So ML at right. Okay. So when we do that, we've got a positive ML. We've got a positive M. Okay. And we've got a minus Anyone? 
Okay. Yep. W not x squared over 2. Okay. So now we solve for that one. All right. So ML is going to be W not L squared. So we got um, W not over 2. L squared minus x squared. Okay. Yes? Do we, if we sum, wait, we're summing moment from the right or from the left? From the, oh, so this would have been, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, good. So this, thank you. Okay, and then what about, if we're summing from the x, what about v times x, so what do we from the right? What about x times I'm sorry, so what's the question? Or we're summing the moments. Suppose we're summing the moments from the left side. Oh yeah, then you have so to keep, then you have to do v. That's why we didn't do, then but you use v, but you don't use fl. Oh, we have to use yeah. fl. Yeah, yep. we didn't use fl. Oh, we didn't use fl. <laughs> See, there we go. Okay, so this is going to be, this FL is W not L, so we have a W not LX, right, so we have, okay. All right, good. What's another way to do this? Right, okay, so we can do... Uh, we can use our integral uh, differential relationships, right? <coughs> okay. So in this case, um, we have a W equals dV dx, and we do have a W, right? Uh, is W negative or positive in this case? It's negative, right? So we're going to have a negative W naught, okay, dx is equal to dV, right? So uh, what we'll do is we'll integrate that, and so we get a V equals minus W naught x plus, we'll call it C1, okay? Well, this is when we still think about equilibrium, all right? But we now think about equilibrium at the boundaries, right? So which boundary should I pick for this? What would you pick? Zero through L. Well, which boundary, though? Zero. Yeah, at the, at the left side, probably, right? Okay, so there what we do is we draw a little, little thingy, right? And we're just at the left side. And we have ML, okay? And we have for, force down, M, all right? And, uh, well, what is uh, C1 then? Zero. Oh, wait. Yeah. No. C1 is just going to be FL, right? And that's uh, going to be the uh, W not L. No, because it's at the left side. There's no contribution, right? This is just at the boundary, all right? Just up at the boundary, so there's no distributed force, okay? The distributed force also is, uh, we've accounted for it in here, okay? So, so now we have an expression for the shear force, okay? And lo and behold, yay, they match. Okay, that's what we want. So what do we do now? Well, we can use dm dx, right? It's equal to v. 
All right, so for that, we'll have a, uh, another relationship, dm is equal to vdx, right? vdx we already have is w naught l minus x, okay? dx, we integrate both sides. We get that m is equal to w naught l x <coughs> minus w naught x squared over 2 plus a c2, okay? And what do we do here? We, again, we're going to think about what's happening at the left side, okay? So to do that, right, we plug in x equals 0, right, and then we get c2 is equal to m, and we have here that we have ml equals minus m, right? So c2 is going to be equal to minus ml, right? And ml uh, from is, is minus w naught, so this is going to be minus w naught l squared over 2. Okay? All right. So, um, <clears throat> yes? Uh... So C2 equals M, right? At, at X equals L, C, this is at X equals 0, right? Okay, M equals to C. Yeah, M is equal to C, and we said from up here, right, that... Oh, okay. Okay? All right. Okay, so uh, now we have an expression that's a little bit long, but hopefully it's correct, where we have a W naught LX minus... W naught x squared over 2 minus W naught L squared over 2. And lo and behold, that looks exactly like what we got over there. Okay? So you can use either of these techniques. Unless we say use one particular technique, then you better use that technique. All right? Now, if we want to do deflection, <clears throat> when we think of deflection, what are the two things that we think about? We think about the vertical displacement, right, and the slope. Those are the two things we're thinking about. And unfortunately, or for better or worse, Hibbler and ourselves, right, we think about uh, that in terms of a little v. All right, and it's not the, it's not new, okay, it's a little v, but I'm just making it kind of newish, all right, because new is the Poisson's ratio, right, so that's confusing. So we care about dv dx, right, is equal to theta. So we care about the angle and we care about the displacement, right? Those are the two things we care about. So um, for this, <laughs> uh, let's see. Did I, I think I probably have, if we did the table method, all right, it should just be in a table, essentially. All right, so that, let's see. Um, I don't know. Did I put it in this one? Let me see. Or did I put it in the next one? No, I have it here. Okay, so right before the end, or right before the finite element analysis, okay, here's this table. Right? And this is describing um, uh, the deflection. All right, we have this expression. Um, we have uh, an expression for moment, which may or may not have the same sign as what we have. We have an expression for shear force. Okay? And in fact, well, at x equals 0, right, we said it was minus ml. So we can already see minus ml where ml was w naught l squared over 2, right? So we can see that it doesn't follow the convention here, all right? And uh, at, uh, for internal shear force, it was just fl, which was positive. So again, it doesn't follow the convention here, all right? Uh, this curve, it's displacement, so you can say, all right, well, it's going down, 
And yeah, we would consider it to be negative, right? But they have positive expressions here. Okay, they're considering positive to be downward, okay, which is also against our convention, right? But these are the types of tables that you might find in a textbook or on the internet. All right. Now, if I want the slope at a, a particular location, what do I need to do? Derivative. And which one do I take the derivative of? Yeah, so the bottom left one, right? And I got, so I can only take the, it's dv dx, right? Taking the derivative of this is going to do me no good, even at the end, because there's no x term in there. Okay, so you can only, if you got to find a slope, you can only do it with an expression that has uh, the displacement as a function of x. Okay. All right, so that's, that's the table. All right, now if we want to do this using the method of integration, it's not the prettiest thing, all right, but we can give it a whack. All right, so now let's look at deflection. Okay, so if we look at deflection, and we're going to use, so we did, said so you could use the tables, right, that's, that's nice, and we showed that, and in that case, actually I have it right here, um, the deflection will end up being the minus of this, so this is minus w naught x squared, 6l squared minus 4lx plus x squared, all over 24ei. So for this, all right, if I want to figure this out using integration, okay, what do I do here? I do EI D, right, like this is equal to moment, okay, like that. Um, I've got an expression for moment down here or over here, either one, right? So m is equal to this stuff all the way over here, okay? And I integrate. Now, I'm gonna integrate twice, right? So if I integrate twice, sorry for leaving, leave. see you later. All right, so if I integrate twice, what are my boundary conditions? Because I need, I need to integrate, I gotta integrate twice, right? So I integrate twice. Huh? Well, let's see. One is displacement, right? The v of zero is zero. Okay. Do I? Right. The wall. The wall is also equal to zero. Okay. So when you do the first integral, right, when you do the first integral, you're going to get EI, EIO. You're going to get this, okay, is equal to something, right? And so dv dx, okay, that is going to be something we can, we can use this boundary condition. And then when we get to v, we can use the other boundary condition. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, good. Now, what if we have an indeterminate system? Okay, and which one should we use? Which one should we use? Mm. Let's use, we'll make one up. This is really bad to make these up, all right? But we'll try. We'll make one up. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Is this determinate or indeterminate? This is determinate, right? What about now? Not so much, right? Because we've added one more constraint. Okay. So let's let's say that this is is this a problem already? Because I can't. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm if I'm repeating myself or not. Uh, let's do it this way. Let's put this here. This might be a problem, right, that we've already done. Okay. All right. So how how do you suggest we attack this? Yes. Okay, yeah, all right. So we could think of it as this, maybe, right? Where we have, uh, we'll call it some, we'll just call it some reaction there. Okay, like that, okay. That's uh, that's thing, and then this, or maybe what I do actually is I think about it as as this. Okay, like that. Does that make sense? All right, using superposition. And what, what do I need? In order to solve this, right, let's say that I have some displacement here, delta 1, and I have some displacement <coughs> here of delta 2, right? What do I need? I need for it to be 0, right, at that location. So I need that delta 1 needs to equal delta 2, right? And that's at x equals, uh, that'll be at x equal uh, L, essentially, if I'm going from the left, right? Um, that may not be enough, though, all right? Um, I, I think it, well, let, let's see, because we have one unknown, so let, let's see. All right, so how do we attack this problem? No, we cannot say the angle is zero at the roller, okay? It can have some slope, right? Imagine that Q is really small. Well, it's gonna be like an inflection. Yes, it, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to have zero angle there, okay? It can, it can like go up and kind of up. Overshoot it. Yeah, okay? Yes, because it's a roller, all right? Okay, so how would you, how would we attack this? Well, um, this one I think is pretty. This this R one is actually not that bad. What is what is delta two, right? Using our tables, delta two is going to be R L cubed over three E I. Okay, that's from the tables. Um, what is, what, what do we have here? This, this one is, is, uh, is definitely more complicated, okay? Um, and we probably want to break it up into uh, a couple of different problems, right? So we won't, we won't solve it out completely, right? But the one relationship that should be useful, okay? Let's make sure. Is is this one? So for a cantilever. Okay. 
array with point load, we can write out that v of x, okay, in this case, is going to be minus a force times x squared, or no, is that, yeah, x squared, 3li minus x over 6ei. Okay, so the w one way to look at this, right, is, uh, is twofold, okay? The simpler one is probably, uh, we'll call it uh, the delta one due to q, all right? What would you all write here? What would you, how would you attack this? <coughs> how would we figure out what delta one is due to q? So we're looking, so we got to break, we got to figure out a delta 1 here due to Q, and we've got to figure out a delta 1 due to P, all right, in order to be able to figure out what the delta 1 is. Because we need to do delta 1 plus this one, right, is got to be, or, or uh, they're opposite, so delta 1 has to equal delta 2, right? So how do we, how do we attack this? Yes? Is it not possible to further use That's what we're doing. This okay. is delta one due to Q, and we're, we are. So we're breaking it down. We're breaking down the left one into a superposition of two problems, one due to P and one due to Q. Okay. All right? So because you know what the deflection formula is for the table, could you not just plug in? OK, so you tell me what to do. I do have that. Oh, um, so since Q is all the way at the end, then you know that x is equal to L and f is equal to Q. All right, close, close. Where, so do, I'm um, interested, huh? I, I see. I, I uh, see? What do you see? Um, I was assuming that the point that I'm measuring x from is the wall. It's not the wall. It's no. with respect to the pivot point. Okay, so? Uh, x is equal to L over 2. Uh, no. Look at this diagram. Right, so x is equal to, so for this, we're going to use x equal to L, all right, and there's something else we have to change. Yes, Michael. Okay, so let's, let's break it down. What are we saying? We're saying that, so I've got x here is L. So yes, so what does L need to be? L needs to be, the L now needs to be 3L over 2. Okay, we've done this a few times, and I think it's important to understand what's going on here. Okay, this is a general expression. Imagine this were just a beam. Okay, if this were, well, it is a beam, right? But imagine it was a beam with just a load at the end. Okay, if that's the case, right, and the length of the beam is L, I can just plug in this formula. But the length of this beam, like L is a variable, okay? So like if I tell you it's 15 meters instead of 10 meters, right? You're going to put in 15 meters. In this case, I'm telling you, it's not L, it's 3L over 2. Okay? This is what you pull from the table, and now the L here is 3L over 2. Yes, Jay? Okay, so the L is total length of the bar, right? That's right. So what is X, uh, X equal L that I'm doing? X equal L, so that's, this is good. X equals L is this length, right? And x equals 3L over 2 is this length. Okay? You see? That's why we're doing some of this. All right? Because it's a little confusing, right? So delta 1, 
all right? And it's not f, it's just we're doing substitution, right? We don't put in an f in, right? We're going to put in q, right? So we have minus q uh, l squared 3 times 3l over 2 minus l all over 6ei, okay? That was the simple one. <laughs> the next one is a little trickier, all right? If all you're given is this relationship and we want to know what delta 1 is because of p, remember we did this? This was a little confusing. How do we attack that? How do we attack that? Use, just use words and I'll write it out as we do it in the math. How do we attack it? That's right. Okay, so for P, so for delta 1 from P, right? This is a trick. We're just going to say this is tricky stuff. All right? What we have to do is we have to further break it down. So first, what do we do? We figure out, we'll call a delta 1A, okay, at that location. All right? And this is right underneath. P, okay? But then we need to know the slope, right? And have this hypotenuse, which is L over two, to figure out how much further it goes down. We'll call that delta one B, okay? Due to P, all right? So for this, the delta one P Okay, is going to be equal to, so what's delta 1a? Okay, so we have this, right? Now what's the length of the beam? L over 2, right? Okay, so we have, and where is it, where's the, where's p located? At L over 2, right? Okay, so we have to, so delta 1a, maybe I'll write it out like this. Delta 1a is going to be the minus p l over 2 squared 3 times l over 2 minus l over 2 all over 6ei. Now, in reality, we could have just used this equation over here and substituted an L over 2, right? Because it's at the end. Okay, so either way, this should work out, though. Okay. Um, okay, so now uh, what, what should we do here? We should, and, and it does. Actually, if you look, if you do the math real quick, it does. There's a, remember, there's a 2 times 3 in a denominator, so it all works out nicely. Okay, so that's... That's what this delta 1a is, okay? Delta 1b, how do we figure out delta 1b? Okay, so what's the angle Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, there's a, okay, there's a all right, so um, delta uh, or theta of L over 2, okay. How do, we, how do we attack this? Well, first we have to take the derivative of, of V, right? Okay, so probably easiest just to do that, okay, where we say theta is equal to dV dx. Okay, and, uh, and so for this we have... Uh, Minus, it may be easier, let's, let's write it out like this. Like that. Okay, just to, you make the derivative easier. Okay, so then we do this, we have uh, minus 6 
FLX minus or plus 3FX squared, okay, all over 60i. Did we do that right? Or did I do it wrong? Okay. So now we have an expression for theta, but we're doing it L over 2, okay? And L over 2 is uh, at, at, the, at the right end, okay? So if that's what we have, we can write out the theta at L over 2 is going to be equal to minus 6FL. Except it's not L, right? It's actually L over 2 times L over 2, okay, plus 3 times F L over 2 squared over 6 EI. Okay. And then what do we know? We know that the delta 1B is going to be equal to the hypotenuse, right, hypotenuse L over 2 times theta of L over 2. All right? So if we look at, sorry, it shouldn't be F. This should be, should be Q. No, is, is it P? It's P, sorry. Okay. Just like that. All right. <coughs> so if now, so we take all these expressions, right, and we say that theta, the delta 1 is equal to delta 2, right? What are the, what, what, what's, what are, what's the unknown in here? We have, we know everything in this equation and this equation. We know everything in this equation, right? We, um, know everything in this equation. The only thing we don't know is R. Okay, so now we can solve for R. Okay, and that's how we figure out what the reaction force is at R. Now, if we want to know something like the deflection, okay, at a location here, okay, that's that's kind of that's kind of a pain too, right? So we we went through all the trouble of figuring out what R is. Okay. Now what we would have to do is we have to do another superposition where we have R, right, and we figure out what the elastic curves look like across it. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay. So let's if we go back to what people were interested in covering, <laughs> we only did one. Right? Or we did a couple. We did indeterminate beam and we did um, uh, beam deflection. All right? So we got, we did kind of the start. Of these, are there strong opinions on what you would like to do next? Failure criteria? Okay, let's talk about failure criteria. All right, so you tell me. We've got about four different failure criteria, right? What are they? Okay, so, and that's for, and we have two different types of materials, right? So more is under the brittle, right? And what's above more? What's the one that we used before more? The simpler one. Yeah? Okay. Or, yeah, I mean, you could actually say that this is more, and you could actually, what I was thinking is you have, like, modified more. Okay. You could call it that. Yeah. Okay. So, but we have maximum normal stress, and we have, like, and that could be more, and you have the modified more. Okay. What about the ductile? Is it, is it the one harvested, one 
Yeah, so you have Von Mises, Presto. He Henke, uh, who else is in there? Maxwell. I think there's one more. Tresca. Okay, and then Tresca is the top one. Tresca is, and this one is, right, max shear stress, right, theory? And this one is max distortion. Energy theory. Okay. So if, I mean, just brief, if I know absolutely, if I can't remember anything else, right? I know that for brittle, I'm looking at the max normal stress, right? And I'm looking at the, and, 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 and that's good, all right? Modified more, eh, a little bit dicier, okay? And we can talk about that, right? Um, but that one, I'm going to be drawing the sigma 1, sigma 2 above, okay? Tresca, max shear, right? So I got to figure out what the absolute maximum shear stress is, right? Which we know how to do. And then I need to figure out, okay, how does that absolute maximum shear stress compare to the shear strength of the material, okay? And the shear strength of the material is going to be, what is the shear strength of a material? For a what is shear strength? Sometimes we call this S S Y. S Y over two. Yeah, it's S Y over two, right? And we've done this a few times, right? If you look at the uniaxial loading of a bar, right, and then we say, hey, what's the uh, absolute maximum shear stress in this bar when it's uniaxially loaded? It's half, right? And we can do that by more circle. And um, we don't report, the, the people testing the materials, they don't report that typically, right? They just report the yield strength because that's what they were measuring. They were measuring a normal stress when they, when they, when they pulled it apart. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. For the, for the max normal stress theory, right, on a sigma one, sigma two plot, what do I have? What does it look like? Any suggestions? Okay. Yes? This is for brittle? Yeah, for brittle. I wouldn't use maximum normal stress theory for a ductile. You have more, you have more compression, uh, more, more max compression. Yeah, so, compression. yeah, okay, good. So it's a square, and often it's offset from the origin. Okay, so like what I would do is I'd say, okay, I've got my, uh, we'll call it um, uh, SUC. Often we're using the ultimate compressive strength and the ultimate tensile strength. And then I say maybe I have an SUT up here. And I draw it like that. Okay. So. That's maximum normal stress theory. The modified one, all right, and, and sometimes, and if I give you a problem, there's a good chance I'm going to say that the ultimate tensile strength is equal to the ultimate compressive strength, if it's maximum normal stress theory, okay, just to keep it easy. I don't want to make it too crazy. But if I'm in a crummy mood, or if you're in a bad mood on a Friday night, you might think about the modified more, okay? All right, and what does this look like? This one looks kind of similar, right? But the and the first and the and the third quadrants are the same. But then what we say is that in the second and fourth quadrant it's actually, well, it's actually kind of a curve, like that. But what we do is we make a line, okay? We make it a line, and then we have to see whether or not we're then. Yes? Could you go over the use cases on what exactly each specific point, as well as each specific case for the 
modified into the normal Moore's square R? Yeah, so, so in this case, this point right here is going to be S U T S U T, right? This point over here is going to be S U T zero. This point over here is zero S U T, okay? And this is going to be S U C S U C, okay? So Those points. S U C is for max normal stress for compression. Yes. And ultimate strength. tensile strength. Ultimate, ultimate ultimate compressive strength. Yes. Okay. All right. And so your goal, if you choose to accept it, is to make sure that your operating, you know, are in here. And you all remember how to figure out if you were outside the boundary, right? If you have the x component, you figure out what the line is, right? This is going to be some y equals mx plus b, right? You figure out what the line is, and then you, or you figure out your point is, and you plug it into here, and if it's above, you know, if this point is above that, then you're good. If it's below, you're, you got problems. And, and similarly, if you're above it out, if you have an expression for the line out here, Right, and if you're above it, then you have problems. If you're below it, you have, you're okay. Okay, all right. So those are kind of more of the uh, how you, how do you say say boutique, right? Maybe the boutique criteria. Okay, the biggie that you want to make sure you know, right, is absolute maximum shear stress theory, right? And and that's Tresca. All right. So if you're given, let's say you're given a state of stress. And I'm just going to make this up. I haven't done this. Okay. And this gets the Mohr circle. Let's say we have tau xy and we have sigma y. Let's say that tau xy is, I don't know, 50 megapascals. Let's say that sigma y is 100 megapascals. Okay. And let's say that sigma x is zero okay and I want to know if I fail by either oh and I gotta give you an sy I don't know let's say that sy I don't know how this is gonna work let's say that sy is 80 that's probably a bad choice okay but I, I think that puts I think that means well let's see what I think I think Given that SY is less than all of them, <laughs> probably failure, all right? But let's, let's, let's do it, all right? Well, it's not less than 50, okay? But it's definitely less than 100. We'll see. Let's see what happens, all right? Okay, so you tell me. What do I do? What do I do? If I want to use Tresca, what do I do? Yes? Okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I'm like, I care, I don't care about the principal stresses, right? Okay. I really care about them, the, um, the uh, absolute maximum shear stress, right? Yeah. But yes, okay, I like it, I like it. So let's go ahead and let's plot some circles. Okay, and... And to do this, right, my, my first choice, probably find out where the middle of the Mohr circle is, right? And that's easy. That's just the average, right? And so the average here is, right, yeah, and it is for this problem. No, 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 it's not 40. It's the average of, the, uh, average of sigma x and sigma y. It's 50. Okay, so I, let's just say we put it, I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm trying to think what's going to happen, but we'll just do that. So we'll say this is the average, all right? And that's equal to 50 megapascals, okay? Now, where, where is my point? Where is my, where is my current, given my current state of stress, my current orientation, where do I put where do I put the dot on the circle? Okay, good, because tau xy is positive. That's a good call. Okay. 
So this is a little tricky, right? Sigma x is what? Zero, right? So I'm actually going to put this point right here. This is going to be sigma x comma tau xy. All right? Because my sigma, I, I didn't, I said sigma x is zero, right? And so I usually to associate sigma x with tau xy on more circle. So now, where's the other point? It's on the opposite side, right? I'm going to put it up here, okay? And this is going to be my sigma y minus tau xy, like that, okay? So my Mohr circle, my first Mohr circle, looks something like that. Okay. And I've got the opportunity to calculate a radius, right? I can calculate it a couple of different ways. All right. But let's say that I calculate the radius using, well, I don't know, which one should we use? Maybe it's easier to use this one actually. All right. So I know that I've got a this is this is 50 here, and I know that tau xy it's uh, also 50, right? So this is gonna it's one one square to two, so this is fifty square to two. Like that. That's the radius. What's could you refresh on the reason why you have two points sigma sigma x tau xy and sigma y negative tau xy? Yeah. So um, let me put up the, uh, so I know people are wanting the attendance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay late, though. So if you guys want to stay late, we can stay late, all right? But no, you don't have to stay late. Okay. So let's do it like this. Uh, okay. All right. So... There's a question, okay, how do we know, how do we know that this, it's down here, right? That's the question, okay? Well, we normally, the first thing you do after you plot the average, okay, on a more circle is figure out where your sigma x tau xy is. And what is sigma x? Zero. It's zero, right, so, and tau xy is positive. So it's that, it's, that's, that's why I put it there. What's the physical significance of those two points? So at sigma x is 0, tau x, y, is that just a point? That's just a point on the Mohr circle, all right, where it goes through the, the vertical axis, OK? So after we've done that, all right, we've got this. OK, so then what's the radius? The radius is 50 squared to 2, right? <laughs> You want to find, you said you want to find the principal stress, right? So this one is sigma 1, okay? We'll call this one sigma 2, and this one we'll call sigma 3, all right, at the origin, because the third one is, is not, right? So what are sigma 1 and sigma 2? Well, sigma 1 is just the sigma average, the 50, plus... 50 square root of 2, right? And sigma 2 is going to be 50 minus 50 square root of 2, okay? Could you also go over the physical significance of those principal stresses? So sigma x is the stress in the x, sigma y is the stress in the y. Exactly, what, does, what is sigma 1 and sigma 2? Sigma 1 and sigma 2 is this are when we rotate and we get to a state of stress where there's no shear stress, okay? There's no shear stress when I'm here or here. Okay. Okay. Now that's that's fine. Uh, the absolute maximum shear stress for this situation is. Is going to be 50 square root two. You got it. Okay. All right. So if we care about Tresca, all right. 50 squared of 2, that's like 1.7, right? 
Square root of two? What actually no 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 no. Square root of two is around seventy point six. Seven point seven point zero seven. No, seven point seven. Is that one point? No, no, that's square root of two over two. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. one point four then. It's about one point four. Okay, so one point four. All right, so that's four. So this is probably around about ninety megapascals. Point ninety. I said about ninety. About ninety. Right. So that's about ninety megapascals. Okay. So. What is the shear strength of the material? It's less. Why does it divide by two? Yeah, so it's only 40 megapascals, right? So, do we have failure? Yes, we do. We have failure. Okay, great. Why do you divide by two again? Why not? Because we're, interested, we're doing a comparison of shear strengths, right? And for uniaxial loading, the more circle, right? Uniaxial loading, here we go again. Sigma 1, right? The more circle looks like this, right? All right, so that's uniaxial loading. And if I change that, not to sigma 1, but to change it to SY, then this becomes SY, right? And this down here is the SSY. And that's equal to one half S Y. And S S Y is the max or the uh, shear strength. Shear strength. This right. is shear strength. Okay. okay. So we we fail. All right. We fail because S S Y is less than this. So S Y is the tensile strength, the max tensile strength, and S S Y, which is the max shear strength, is all. That's right. That's right. Now, what if we care about von Mises? All right. If we care about using von Mises, okay, then what do we do? We have to figure out what the equivalent uniaxial is. Okay. And how do you figure out the uniaxial? There are a couple of different ways to do this. There are two formulas you want to have on your sheet. Okay. One formula is this one. How's that? How's that? How's that? Yeah, this is based off a of triaxial. The other one, if you want, is a little bit messier, but this one you can plug in whatever you want. So we can use this one, right? If we use this one, we already know what sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three are. So this is a this is kind of a go-to. If, if you've already figured out the principal stresses, right? Sigma one is 50 plus 50 square root of two, sigma two is that. So you can plug it in right there. The other one you can use, all right, is you have sigma x squared plus sigma y squared plus sigma z squared, okay? And then you do plus six times all of this. All over two. It's it's still in there. Okay. So those are your two those are your two equations that you can use. All right. Now, once you've figured out sigma uniaxial, what do you compare it to? These are more expensive. What do you compare it to? Do you compare it to SSY or do you compare it to SY? SY. Yeah, that's the thing. You want to compare it against SY. Okay. So if sigma uniaxial is greater then SY, then you have a problem. Okay? Right? Typically, what you'll find, right, is that the, if we looked at the, remember when we looked at the envelope, the envelope of, of the uh, von Mises distortion criterion is larger than uh, the envelope for the, um, for the, uh, for the uh, Tresca. So it's an ellipse wall, like the Tresca yeah. one. Square on quadrant one, triangle on quadrant yes. two and four. Yes, bigger square. That's right. Okay, great.
Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Anything you want to go through? Sigma 3? OK, we know sigma 3 from this problem because sigma 3, or sigma z in this case, is out of the plane. Right? And sigma z out of the plane means that that is it's zero. Right? And so to get to a state of principal stress, I don't need to rotate out of the, I only, I, I'm rotating about z, okay, to get my uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So sigma 3 stays 0. That's why sigma 3 is equal to 0. Okay, so yes? This is only for um, uniaxial loading, right? Like if it were a different case where you did have a sigma 3 that was not 0, that didn't coincide with the, um, with the axis, like, so how do you calculate for a sigma 3? Okay, so... You can do, right, we, we showed how to do the eigenvalue problem, <laughs> all right? That is not going to be on the exam, all right? But if I gave you a sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, you better be able to figure out an equivalent uniaxial stress. And that's just with this formula? That's just with this formula. Okay, okay. okay. so, so there, it's, you can't really calculate with, for sigma 3 unless you have the eigenvalue, unless you do the eigenvalue problem? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, one more thing. I yeah. noticed on the last semester's final exam, you gave the tables for the. Is that. Do we need to write the tables out on our formula? No, no. Don't worry about writing the tables out. So if we do end up needing them, you'll provide them? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Other questions? I didn't, I didn't have one about the, uh, the exam. Okay. I just want, I mentioned like uh, a week or two ago about like getting, getting involved in research next semester. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was wondering when I could talk to you about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Probably so, not this week. Yeah, why don't you wait until that. after exams are done? And, um, and then uh, when things have settled down a little bit, send me a message. Like during winter break? Yeah, during winter break. All right. I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back in the office uh, uh, in, in January. We'll just get back to me. Okay. I guess. Send me, yes, send me, a, yeah. I'm really behind on emails and things, as you know. <laughs> okay, yes? I just want to say thank you for a good semester. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. Jeffrey, yes? Thank you. I was wondering if it would be possible to repeat Yeah, so send me a message. Same thing. So I should? Yeah, email. Send me an email. Uh, I like my resume or anything? Just send me a message. All right, I'll just like let you know that I'm I know who you are, Jeffrey. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, so Question. Um, What's up? For last semester's <coughs> exam, yeah. um, I think you went to try to fix it, but yeah. I think that oh, you said it was over here. It's a yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure that should be a change over here <laughs> to this term, not this term. Um, so this one, uh, no, I, I, um, I think um, the reason there was a typo here, okay, is uh, it come come up come up? So where's the table? Where's the table? This is the table. Yeah, yeah. It's because I put in um, uh, this. This was this was incorrect. Right. Is this the correct? Yeah. This is the correct. Okay. So. And it was only for it was only for this case. The yeah, top so case was fine. For this case, for the the forces in the middle, there's a correction, right? Yeah. This is two x two. Yeah. So there's like the forces in the middle right here. We're, we're, we call this P. Right? Yep. Um, this Q. So uh, this this is gonna have negative, like a negative deflection, right? So shouldn't it be correction over here? Not over here. Um, this one is coming from. So this is we have to do a a a, a uh, this. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that two should be over here, and not over here. So when I so I don't think this is right either. I asked them. That's how I told you I could have had a wine. Oh, wait, let me see. I had to go up. I mean, I had to look at it again. Right. But I, I thought I, it could be right. But I think that um, I, I can take a look at it. But which one is, can you see, can you show me which one's which? You have reference stuff. You have the radio club. and This one's over 12. And this one, because see, we're using this one as well. Yeah. I'm more like uh, yeah, right. Ross right. kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. It's the end of the so with this is this is uh, only for this. Uh, we agree on that. Yeah. Okay. So if we go down. Is there food up there that we can have? Yeah. 
Dude, I think it's, I mean, have, yeah, so this one, oh, what? if you go back up. Oh. I should have taken a line. They would have given it to me, too. They asked me, what do I want there? The guy was, like, getting up to, like, grab the box. No, I mean, I'm not. Oh, my God, it is in and wine during this. I have, I have to take a look. I think it's in only one of the two. Yeah, and also, um, um, I, I think this one's in the day. Yeah, so we talked before. I guess we have. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I am sick. I'm actually, I have a really good I don't know if you guys set up. Thank you. Like, you made it or? Yeah, like I line. just wrote down the notes. It's mainly right now. No, so I'm just curious. Because you said he is already 70, so it's like 70 times 70. Oh, right, 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 right. right, right, right. So, I just want to talk to me. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, yeah I'm really good with the second. I don't know if we make the answer wrong. Right. I, I did, yeah. So, it, it, it shouldn't be 10 micro shame. Uh, uh, I wrote down okay. different numbers. this problem. He said you, his sound yeah, like this. If you've changed that to one, why are you guys not doing this? But I don't think it'll take you out. I guess probably other students have to go through this. Okay, I wrote this down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good. Okay, so I was about what would you be willing to offer? Yeah. Hey, hey, it's, really it's, it's already there. It's already there. Okay, bro. It's there because it's, uh, it's already there. Um, it's under the this is the OneNote file. Yeah, and I think this is where I'm going. And the other one is, thank you. I've been putting up going to the pens a lot. I end up here and then I realize I have three pages done. No, yeah, it is still meeting this thing on your rest. I really do not have a chance to do it. Yeah, yeah, no, I just need to hammer it down. No, I, mean, I signed up for the one um, two weeks ago. He said, I, I came so here instead. instead. He said, we realized like half the class that I'm back. Chapter three, four, I had like, early stuff. Like, and like, and uh, early stuff. I didn't sign up for cycles uh, after that. I figured that. Uh, I'll show you right now. Okay. Yeah, I think cycles are going to help you okay on that. It was being run today. Today was the last day. But today's our last meeting. How's it end on tomorrow? Today's our last meeting. Thursday's the reading day. I, it's my first semester here. I, I, I didn't know that Thursday was like not class. Yeah, yeah. Thursdays we're out of class. Let me, let me. Because I remember what I like when I was looking at the sign-up document. It just said everything was on Thursdays. 